Make your way to the first panel in the Underground Railroad Room. It is believed that slavery first arrived in the New World in 1565, when African slaves arrived in the Spanish-speaking colony of St. Augustine, Florida. The first documented account of slavery in the English-speaking colonies was in 1619 at Jamestown, Virginia. African slaves were a part of the triangular trade route. Europeans brought to African kings rifles, beads, cloth, hardware, and other goods. These were traded for captured enemy peoples who were loaded onto cargo ships. The traders were greedy and wanted to bring as many Africans through the middle passage as possible. The captive people were chained and put in the cargo hold into spaces approximately 18 inches high. There was no real sitting or standing room. There was little or no fresh air in the cargo hold. Some Africans actually suffocated to death. Others starved themselves or jumped overboard to avoid a life in bondage, and others simply died of disease. When the Africans reached the Americas, they were traded for tobacco, cotton, sugar, molasses, and rum, which were taken back to Europe. The Africans were auctioned off, and this was the start of the breakup of many families. The southern part of North America was the center of slavery. The production of cotton and rice in the south was economically effective only when done on a large scale, and this type of agriculture relied on large labor forces. As a result, slavery became a large-scale institution in the south. The smaller farms of the north did not rely on slavery, so the institution gradually ended. For plantation owners, control of large enslaved labor forces was essential. The most heinous description of methods of gaining control over a coerced workforce came from a speech by William Lynch, a British slave owner in the West Indies. Speaking to slave owners on the banks of the James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712, he offered the following advice. You cannot get work from slaves in their natural state. They must be broken. That is, breaking them from one mental state to another. Keep the body. Take the mind. In other words, break the will to resist. You must keep your eyes on the female and her offspring. If you break the female mother, she will break the offspring. But don't kill the male. Beat him to the point of death to put the fear of God in him, for he can be useful. By 1787, the 13 colonies were coming together to form a new country, and to govern these new United States, a constitution was written. The word slave never appears in the document, but slavery was a crucial issue for the founders. The framers of the Constitution believed that concessions on slavery were the price for the support of the southern states for a strong and central government. But by avoiding the slavery issue, the framers only postponed the inevitable moral conflict. As James Madison said, It seems now to be pretty well understood that the real difference of interest lies not between the large and the small, but between the northern and the southern states. The institution of slavery and its consequences form the line of discrimination. Eventually, a series of compromises were reached during the Constitutional Convention. The notorious Three-Fifths Clause passed, which counted three-fifths for the slave population and apportioned representation, even though they had no voice or vote. This resulted in extra representation for the southern states in the House and in the Electoral College. The slave trade compromise stopped all slave imports after 1807, encouraging slave breeding within the U.S. and slave auctions. In addition, the Fugitive Slave Act was adopted making it mandatory that runaway slaves be returned to the plantation owners. There were those like William Lloyd Garrison who felt that the Constitution was a covenant of death and an agreement with the devil. Still, others felt that if the Constitution strengthened slavery in the short term, it created a central government strong enough to abolish it in the long run. <laughs>